as titrimetric analysis concerns with volumes of liquids so apparatus includes burettes pipettes and measuring flasks when you are issued apparatus from the store make sure that the whole apparatus is thoroughly clean clean it with the soap solution wash it with water rinse it with distilled water and then with the solvents which have to be used let us pick each item one by one and learn how to clean and use it this is burette which is a graduated tube having a stop cock at the end to control the delivery of the liquid pour some of the soap solution into the burette add some water incline the burette to certain angle so that the liquid does not move out make sure that the stop cock is closed thoroughly check the leakage if the drops are still coming out of the burette that means this burette is leaking so don't use this burette for further work and change the leak burette from the stop and get the issued new one make sure the burette is clean when there are no droplets sticking to the walls of the burette it shows that it is clean now you rinse it with distilled water fill the distilled water to almost one third of its capacity again incline the burette to a certain angle rotate the burette in such a way that the liquid touches the whole of the inner surface and is rinsed properly but it does not move out rotate it well and then discard the liquid distilled water which is by opening the stop cock close the stop cock properly now clamp the burette check you have closed the stop cock and rinse the burette with the tight rent which you are going to put in the burette use the funnel to transfer the tight rent when you are going to put the funnel make sure that you are going to leave some gap between the tip of the burette and the funnel so that there is no blockage of the air and the liquid doesn't ooze out fill up to the 1/3 of its capacity again incline the burette in the similar manner and make sure that the tight rent touches whole of the inner surface but does not go out rotate it well and discard the liquid close the stop cock there is a tip if you feel difficulty in putting the solution from the top of it you can unclamp the burette and put the funnel in such a way make sure once again that the stop cock is closed and then transfer the solvent but the funnel should always be put in such a way that some of the air is able to pass through it now open the stop cock fully because there is air in this portion 
so stop cock the open the stop cock fully and rush the air out with the help of the liquid just touch the tip of the burette with the wall of the beaker so that the last drop sticking goes into the beaker now since the level of the liquid has gone really down so we are going to pour some more solution into it keep the burette little inclined so that there is a easy flow of the air when you are pouring the liquid now clamp the burette when you are clamping make sure that the stop cock is on your right hand side the burette is properly vertical in position let the level of the liquid set down before you note the reading now when you read the meniscus we know that if the liquid is transparent or water we always use lower meniscus but if the liquid is opaque or translucent a lower meniscus is not readable so we read upper meniscus like here i am using kmno4 colored liquid so we will note down its upper meniscus the level of meniscus should be always along with your eye level to pre to prevent the errors because of parallax so it is always useful that set the level in front of your just at the your eye level only there is no need to use the index paper because the burettes now are the ones which are already made which can remove the error because of parallax the reading is clear now if reading over here is 19.0 you can well see the whole of the burette has been divided into point 0.1 ml so each division is 0.1 ml here it comes to the level of 19.0 so we will note down that it is 19.0 initial reading 19.0 now let's pick up the other device pipet which is used in the volumetric for sucking the liquid in this 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 is again a graduated tube it is a device which is used for delivery of the liquids gently push the pipette into the pipette sucker and for cleaning with the soap solution draw some of the liquid into it again incline it horizontally but take care that the liquid you doesn't move out in move into the pipette sucker clean it thoroughly and then wash with water fill up the pipet till one third and remove the pipet sucker make sure that the liquid doesn't move out when you are sure that no more drops are sticking to along to the walls of the pipette it is thoroughly clean now then you rinse it with distilled water put the pipette inside the measuring flask taking care that it does not touch the surface of the measuring flask solution rise into the pipette slowly fill it till one third of its capacity and 
remove the pipet circle slowly and again keep it horizontal so that whole of the solution touches the inner surface of the pipet and then drain it out now the pipet is being rinsed with the solution we are going to use for the titration now again draw the solution from the measuring flask as again it is the transparent liquid we have to make sure that we are going to read the lower meniscus stop where you feel with practice you will be able to level the lower meniscus now slowly drain this liquid into the conical flask when you have opened the clamp completely just touch the pipette to the empty wall keeping the titration flask inclined do not try to ooze out the last drop in the pipette since the pipette is being calibrated along with this drop inside the pipette so don't try to force it out in the titration after delivering oxalic acid solution into the titration flask since this is redox titration between KMnO4 and oxalic acid so half a test tube of dilute H2SO4 to normal H2SO4 has to be added into the titration flask before the titration begins and then oxalic acid solution needs heating as the reaction between the KMnO4 and oxalic acid is slow so the solution in the titration flask has to be heated put the titration flask on the wire gauze and let the solution be heated above 70 degree it should be heated till the point when the titration flask becomes unbearable to touch do not boil the solution note down the initial reading from the burette is 19.0 the heating is necessary to catalyze the reaction and also as the reaction proceeds carbon dioxide evolved in the reaction has to escape the titration flask so the temperature of the liquid should remain almost above 60 degree adjust the knob of the burette to such a manner start running the liquid in small lots as kmno4 is self indicator so there is no need to put any external indicator in this titration run the kmno4 in small lots by controlling from the valve of the stop cock as kmno4 is being run inside it is being used by the oxalic acid which is a reducing agent and mno4 negative is being changed to manganese 2 plus any extra drop from the burette will pink give the pink color to the solution meaning thereby now mno4 negative has been in excess the whole of the reducing agent has been already used in the reaction let the level of the liquid settle down in the burette for a few seconds and note down the final reading it is 28.3 once again it is the upper meniscus which we have noted down 28.3 is the 
final reading of that means the volume used will be the difference between the initial reading and the final reading in this titration 7.3 ml of KMnO4 has been used repeat the same procedure and take three concordant readings every time add 10 ml of the solution oxalic acid solution with the help of the pipette pour it into the titration flask add half a test tube of two normal h2so4 heat it on the on the burner till it is unbearable to touch that means the temperature should exceed 70 degree and then start titrating it kmno4 no indicator required since kmno4 acts as self indicator and take three concordant readings this will be used for standardization of the unknown solution the volume used will be providing normal using the normality equation to calculate the strength of the provided oxalic acid